evening to each and every one of you. So today I want to continue talking about your life. There are challenges you face every day and how you face it is very important. We need to understand how to draw strength from God. In your life, each and every day, the challenges that you face, all right, the moment you step out of your house, you need to understand a few things. You must believe that life's challenges have the potential to make you strong. You must not run away from life's challenges because this is what God wants you to face, not alone, but that you have Jesus with you. And you must believe in order to get strong, you have to face them. So the process of facing it and dealing with it is how you and I, we can become strong people of God. You can't develop strength without pressure. Like someone going to the gym, they want to develop muscles. And so they have to go through a very strenuous lifting the irons lifting the weights, which is going to uh, put a lot of pressure on their arms, on their legs, on their body. And in due time, they de develop strong muscles that can lift up weights that you and I might not be able. And so to what degree of pain or stress that you go through, the same with a bodybuilder. The more weight he put on himself to lift it up, the more stronger he will become. And so always remember life challenges Hard times will make you strong. Comfortable time, no pressure time will make you weak. That's why if you are a parent, do not train your child to be weak by providing everything for them. You do that, you are going to ruin the child's ability to stand and face the world. You must balance it out. A lot of parents, they do not know. They literally make the child, you can say, uh, no strength to face challenges. Everything is provided. They have never worked. They have never tried to make it on their own. Everything mother and father give it to them. You do not do it. You don't even do the works for them. And so how we think about our life's challenges is very vital. Because the quality of resilience is the ability to successfully meet, surmount challenges, obstacles and problems. When I was at the age of 19 years old, my mother allowed me to go through the strenuous, making the trip from Malaysia, crossing the continent of Asia, Middle East, into Europe. So through that experiences, it has taught me how to survive, how to face coldness, 
hunger, pain, tiredness, and so forth. So at that young age, I was in a way like in the army, you get trained. It's sad that Malaysia don't have that national service. In fact, I think they scrapped already. Even the three months, it's like a summer camp holiday. <laughs> but in Singapore, they train every young man to become capable of facing life's challenges. So it is so important how you handle it because you remember Jesus gave a lot of parables about accountability, the faithful servant, what is given, what is going to be required. So you do not give in to life's uh, challenges of pain. Okay? You just become overcomers because Apostle Paul say, we have faith. And in our faith, we need to live our life as overcomers. That means you go through life, you will face uh, all kinds of challenges, situations, things that you do not like to face. Uh, in my work at one time, I used to face very difficult customers. <laughs> I've learned how to handle difficult customers. Beginning, I, my, my body don't like it. That's why people don't like to do sales. Okay? It is, they, they say sales is a very demanding job. You get scolding. You get people throw unkind words at you. The pressure, the demand of forcing you to uh, deliver the goods at a very short period of time, which is not reasonable. And so that was uh, the experience in life doing the sales, I have to meet it. Now we do not lie because a lot of people, they try to say everything is yes can, that is lying. So the Bible says, speak the truth in love. We should not promise if we cannot make it. It's lie. It is not well. I try. That is not good enough. Okay. It is either you can do it or you cannot do it. And it's, it calls for what? Humility. Pride is I can. Everything I can. That's pride. There are things you cannot. You have to say cannot. That's life challenges. You, you, of course, the pressure because you wanted the, 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 the job and you cannot deliver it. Don't lie. Don't say, you know, these challenges, I, I will just say I can do it. And then you never. When I go to East Malaysia, I have to train some leaders. Everything is okay. Everything can faster. Eventually, I told them, look, as People of God, you cannot say everything can. That's your challenge. You have to say no. You cannot meet the deadline, say no, I cannot meet the deadline. You cannot uh, get to the meeting on time, say no, I cannot get to the meeting on time. So this is all tests in your faith, in walking with God, God is looking at you. How do you represent him? You want to be a good witness. You don't want to be a bad witness. So you must know that you need to draw from God's strength. Okay? Every day, whatever you do, you need to ask God. Because if you don't ask God, you leave God out later, then you come crying. Because it did not go according to your ways. And then you go to God. Oh, God, I learned a lesson. Well, the Bible says what you sow, you reap. So it is so important you go to God. In your life's challenges, everything that you do, 
whether you borrow money from the bank, whether you want to get married to that handsome boy, the beautiful girl, whether you want to embark on a journey, everything that you do, you must ask God and draw strength from him. Because in the Lord's prayer, you, when you pray, give us this day our daily bread. Huh? You want God to give you the bread from heaven, the help, the blessing, whatever you need for that day to start your life off. And so this is not just a ritual prayer. This is a relationship whereby daily you go to Jesus. He's your boss. He is the one that say you can do this or do that. The permission given. Okay, so always remember, you live your life, you must live it with asking the boss. Uh, recently, we have people wearing boss too, the t-shirt. And I look at it, it's so funny. Because suddenly I realized my boss too is Jesus. It's not a man. But there are people, they're so zealous. They call the man boss too, my boss. And that's people in the world. So your boss, you must always remember, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he's your boss, whatever you do, you must not do it on your own. Whatever challenges, whatever things you have to face every day, you must say, boss, should I do this? Should I do that? You must get his endorsement. Okay. <clears throat> we all want to be optimistic about our future. Okay. Every one of us, whether you are a housewife, whether you are a student, whether you are the man of the house, or whether you are a young man, a young woman, you are very optimistic. My future is going to be bright. You know, whatever I do, I want to do it successfully. Nobody wants to mess up things in their lives. And so if you don't want to mess up things in your life, you must not do it alone. Okay, you must do it with Jesus. Now I know because the day that I choose to say, Lord, you are the Lord of my life. Everything that I do, I do not do it alone. No doubt I got a wife in the church. I got a departmental heads and all that. I will not do it alone. Okay? My confidence is I will go to my boss. And when he say yes, that's all I need. I don't need people to tell me no, cannot, or yes, you can. And you know, those are people. <clears throat> okay. Important thing is God say yes. You know, that's why the children of Israel, they learn it the hard way. A lot of time they don't go to God. And then they, they suffer, defeat the enemy, wake them up. And then only they start crying to the prophet. And the prophet has to inquire for them. And ask Jehovah God that the people are beaten, your people, should they go again and fight? And then God say, yes, go. Then only they get victory. But if God say no, they stubbornly go, they suffer. So, because we are optimistic about our future and we want to do it right, we must learn, number one, how to handle criticism, okay? Because you want to face life challenges. If they criticize Jesus Christ, 
which Jesus say, I'm your boss. I'm your master. They criticize me that I use the power of Bezebub to, to cast out demons. If you remember, that was one story in the gospel. Jesus said, likewise, they are going to criticize you. So you might as well expect that now as a Christian in your life, you will be criticized because Jesus has been criticized. Don't expect, oh, I don't want people to criticize me. You cannot live that kind of life, okay? If you want to live for Jesus, you will be criticized. Expect that. But Jesus wants you how to handle it. That's very important. Okay? Criticism will come to you. It should not consume you. It should not even bring you bow down to them. But you must learn how to handle it. And if you have been criticized, which every one of us will have never escape in life, okay, whether from our own family, whether from outside, your working place, you will never escape it. But the interesting part is you must hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Don't handle criticism with, I will pay you back. That is not the way that Jesus wants you to do. Jesus wants you to hold your peace when you've been criticized and let God handle your criticizer. David in his life, his own son wanted to rebel against him. Can you believe that? King David. All right, his own son, Absalom. In 2 Samuel chapter 16, wanted to overthrow King David as a king and take the throne. And of course, <clears throat> uh, there was one followed by the name of Shimei. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5. One of Saul's household. He cursed David. And he threw a stone at him. And his men. He said that God was repaying David. For all the blood that he had shed. And that the Lord had handed over. The kingdom to his son Absalom. So here, King David. Is going to be the king of Israel. But Saul's household got this guy named Shimei, a handicapped guy. And he was cursing David and throwing stone. So here is a handicapped guy, can you imagine? Cursing David, criticizing that because you have killed people, everyone, and now this is what you get back. I mean, he was throwing judgment upon King David. And, of course, uh, King David has got a lot of general warriors. And one of them told David, why you allow this guy to curse you to throw stone? Let me go cut his head off, which he could have done it. But David hold his peace. David could have taken things into his own hand and told his general, go and cut his head off and shut him up. Once and for all. But David did not do that. He just leave it to God. Okay. So this is where. Criticism. Is something you can avoid. Easily. How? Don't say anything. <laughs> just don't say anything. Let them criticize. I'll just keep quiet. <laughs> Hold your peace. And so. If you want to be a good leader, if you want to be a good disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must do nothing when you have been criticized. Don't become justif justifying and defensive. Don't. Because truth will prevail. 
All right. You have God is your defender. You don't have to defend yourself. Does that mean to say you just don't do it? Yeah, don't do anything. Because now God wants to be your, be your vindicator. He wants to vindicate what is right and wrong. And that's why the Bible says, judge not. That you will not be judged. Whatever you meet out is going to meet back to you again. So we need to be people that hold our peace. If you are willing to stand out from the crowd, now not everybody when faced with challenges dare to do that. <clears throat> but today we are learning to be like Jesus. You remember when Jesus was arrested, everyone took away, you know. Even Peter said, no, I don't know him. <laughs> So it, it shows fear overcame them. And that's why we need to pray whereby filled with the love of God, it will cast out the fear. All right. I told you in China, <laughs> and I was with the Amy Wang and the group teaching, and we thought that the, the red guard was coming to dock the door down and arrest all of us. So I'm there teaching them as one of their leaders. I went and hide in the room. Later, I repented. I was so shameful. I was so fearful. And then I realized, oh my God, what have I done? I allowed fear to overcome me. Instead of standing in the front line, I took off. You know? And then for the next few days, we were teaching. Again, there was a lot of knock on the door. This time I stood my ground. I did not leave my place where I sat. You know, the leaders are always up in the front. You cannot run away. So if this is really the red guard, they will catch me first. The leader will be the one. So I stood my ground. And later I felt the peace of God. I did not foreshoot the people. I did not run off, hide in the room. All right. So this was a lesson for me. And the question is not, will I be criticized? But how can I handle and learn from criticism? Okay, many of us, we don't like it. But today I'm telling you, whether you like it or you don't like it, you will face criticism. So, we know in criticism, is there truth in it, all right? Or is God saying something to you? When you're criticized, huh, you've got to ask the question in your head. Is there truth in it? What they are saying, is it true or not? Now, David, of course, his hand is full of blood. He killed people, all right? Innocent people and took their wife, Bathsheba. Uriah got killed, his general. So he says, it's full of blood. So David, in his head, he said, yes. She may criticize me, it's true. So sometimes we got to start thinking, what they're saying that I'm not honest, is it true or not? If it is, then we need to repent. Then we need to say, God forgive me. They criticize me from being dishonest. And there's truth in it. Or they criticize me from being lazy. There's truth in it. Or they criticize me for being not compassionate. There's truth in it. I'm selfish. Then I need to repent. And also, uh, we got to know the difference between constructive and destructive criticism. This is so important. That's why I said, if they criticize you, is it true? They need. If it is true, then it's constructive. It will get you to become better, repent, and be more men or women to face your weaknesses. Okay. If they say you're a lazy person and that is true, they need. You're lazy. 
You don't like to work. You don't like to, you know, be doing busy. All the time you are laying around. Then it's true. Then you have to swallow your pride and say, I've got to repent. I should not waste time. I should be doing something. All right? Constructive criticism. But if it's destructive, all right, no truth in it. They want to tear you down or they want to bring you down because they are envious, they are jealous. Okay? Then you leave them to God. You don't do anything about it. <clears throat> you see, we need to realize that the positive, constructive criticism, it will build you up. Whereas the negative, destructive criticism, it will tear you down. This is where you need the discernment. All right? Now, if you are working in your company, you are hardworking, you are bringing in results, you know, and then you have your supervisor or your boss or your manager criticizing is not enough and you are lazy and all, which is not true. Then what you need to understand and discern, don't continue working in the company. Why? They are jealous of your success. They want to tear you down. And you cannot go higher because they are on top of you. One time I worked in an advertising company. The boss know I'm a pastor. In fact, the boss is a member of the FGA. They apply for membership. And I was performing very good. To the point, I was like the, the popular guy in the company. The boss just come in, sit in the office, enjoy. It's like I was bringing sales to the company. And the people like me, from the secretary to the clerk to everybody, because as a Christian, and also they he know I'm a pastor. He has come to church before. He was jealous. He cannot handle my success. He called me into his office. All right. He said, Liao, I want you to know there cannot be two lions in the mountain. Yeah. I was shocked. My boss, he owns the company. Why would he say such a word? And he's come to church before. So I know that he was, he was trying to tear me down. So I told him, boss, I understand. I will accept my resignation. Because you already said, two lions cannot be in one mountain. But he's the boss, I, so I, I cannot understand why. Why, you see, that means he don't want to see me successful. So I tender in my resignation. And, and it's sad because I wanted to bring success, blessing to his company. But today, no more, the company gone. Everything end, ended. I left it to God to handle. This is challenges I face. You know, also when they know you're a pastor, oh my goodness. You know, so he did not support me. But today I'm sure he continued to observe, you know, how the Lord had blessed me and the way, because those days the church was in the house. It was in the house. You know, I, I needed that uh, thousand to two thousand a month to take care of my family, my young little girl, my young little son. So it is so important to understand destructive criticism or constructive criticism and how you face it and handle it. Do not just leave it 
don't because this is your life and god wants you to take accountability all right you have to take accountability of it you must look beyond the criticism you must see this critique what they are up to and you pray because when you pray give us this day our daily bread you you must pray with specific don't pray a miss the bible say don't pray aimlessly all right so when you pray to your heavenly father you must let your heavenly father know what do you want a lot of people they pray a miss they don't know what they want so if you don't know what you want how how can god know okay it is not that god is not omniscient omnipotent but that god wants to hear it from you you got to know what you want and so you must not pray you must pray specific i pray specific i tell god what kind of wife i want what kind of children i want in fact you know uh i, I pray my goals uh how i want to achieve in him and you cannot do anything bringing glory to yourself if you if you start saying i can do it then you don't need god already because you can go do it god say oh you can do it you don't need me so so don't do that you want to say god if you allow me to have this i want it if you don't allow me then you know don't so this is so important you must watch your own attitude towards criticism or the critic okay now the important thing always remember in life challenges you are the one facing the challenge not the people the people can throw all sort of criticism and if you go along and accept it then they are going to point where you need to go someone told me i know what button to push on your life no 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 you don't let people push button in your life if you fall into their criticism and you allow those criticism in life challenges to overwhelm you and you start living according to how they want you to live your life gone that's it already you are not led by the lord you are led by people that means people is going to dictate what you should do what you should not do so when you face life challenges your own you must face it like david i come to you in the name of the lord david always faced challenges he say in god i come to you so don't worry about crit critics if they going to come don't worry about people is going to try to manipulate you try to tell you you, you know you need to marry this person you know you you should not go into this study you need to go don't the important thing is you go to god and you tell god this is what i want god do you think this is right for me to have if not then god block it out okay we must realize that good people always get criticized <laughs> i don't know i i saw you know i saw there was this leader who has been so faithful for so many years later when he retired they call him you old man i say oh my goodness what happened to the respect when he was in position everyone showed the respect but when he retired they call him you old man they call him the old man i felt very angry how can they treat the leader like that and not calling him your old man but this is what life is okay jesus whose motive is pure and in fact the bible say blameless you cannot find any guile in him okay the bible say they accuse him of being a glutton yeah you know and then a drunkard a friend of sinners 
in the gospel. Matthew, Mark, okay, you can find that. They call him the friend of sinner. He's a drunkard, okay? And when we feel emotionally, because we all have emotion, when you're when you exhausted through life challenges, when you feel uh, uh, very bombarded by all this criticism, you need to learn to rest in the law. You need to go have a quiet time, renew your strength like the eagle. Okay, this is what the Bible teach. You need to rest in the Lord and God wants you to, there are times you go and get the strength from the Lord. Always surround yourself with positive people. People that can lift you up, not tear you down, people that can encourage you. That's why Paul always say, let us exalt one another. Let us inspire one another. Don't hang around people that will tear you down, that will somehow become, you know, the holy judge and start judging you because you have not prayed enough, condemn you. Because you are not reaching out enough, condemn you. You don't need any more condemnation. Because the Bible says you love God. You want to do your best for God. The only one that can condemn you is God. Conviction is not condemnation. Okay, condemnation comes from the enemy. But conviction comes from God. That's why God said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's what God told. Jesus told the, the sinner woman, I will not condemn you. Go and sin no more. And that's how we should be. Do not condemn people. If you want to bring them under conviction, let God bring them under conviction. But you do not. You must withhold back from judging and condemning them. Amen. So, responding to criticism is a challenge in life. And you need to be kind to one another, the Bible says. When David, he was kind to those around him, his general. Even when they, the three of them risked their life to bring him the water, they were showing kindness back to David. David did not drink the water. In fact, David honored God with the water. He poured it out to God and say, these people, they are so precious. They risk their life bringing me the water. How can I drink it? So he poured it as an offering to God. You see, in David's life, it's all about God. And he showed the people around him how everything that he received, whether good or bad, he will always go to God. And this is where you and I, in our lives, we need to go to God. Everything that we receive, good or bad, go to God. Don't go to people. You see, a lot of time, we, we, we fall for that mistake of going to people. And if you go to people, it's going to go bigger, the problem. <laughs> it's not going to be solved. Because why? You're going to the arm of the flesh. And the flesh is not going to help you. The flesh already got problem. So flesh and flesh is even worse. So you better go to God. And eventually as we face criticism, we face life challenges, we want to move on more than just a witness. We want to live 
a legacy to people. It is so important. Every one of us, when we die, what kind of a legacy do you want to leave behind? Yeah, it's so important. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, we have the last words of King David. <clears throat> no doubt David was a great leader and he did amazing things for God and for the people. But David left a legacy through inspiring others through greatness. Okay, because David trained up mighty warriors who did exploit beyond him. That means David had this mindset. I want the people I train to be even greater and better than me. And that's how it should be. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8, 37 men were mentioned. Two groups of three, Abishai, Benaiah, and 29 others. All these are people trained by King David. Same thing today. If you are mentoring someone, you are leaving behind legacy. Whereby they will say, wow, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so has imparted very strong discipleship into my life. Or your children, they say, mom or dad, they did not leave me with a lot of money, but they leave me, us with strong teaching, family life, character. Okay, so this is so important. Also, uh, the Bible say, King David raised up this Joseph Bashibet in verse 8. Okay, 2 Samuel 23. This fellow raised his spear against 800 men and killed them all. Such great warriors David had trained. One guy killed 800 people. I don't know what kind of strength he got, but I'm sure. God was on his side. Maybe he's trained his men. You don't rely on your own strength. You rely on God's strength. And so the men all become followers of David on God's strength. One man can kill 800. That's amazing. All right. And then also, uh, he went on to mention Eliezer, Abishai, how these mighty warriors, they can take down 300 men, all right? So this is something very amazing. And today we need to ask ourselves, who is looking at me? Your friends, people in the church, your children, your neighbors. You gotta ask yourself, who is looking at me? And so how you face your life challenges is important. If you are frustrated by it, if you allow it to destroy you, then it's not going to bring God glory. Then you're going to say, oh, look, that's a Christian. But I don't know what has happened to this Christian. He kind of faded out. And also, who are you influencing? You know, you and I today, the challenges we face in this life is we are witnesses for Jesus Christ. Always remember that. And because you are a witness for Jesus, you are going to influence someone. You cannot run away. All right? You need to realize that. The world is a small world. You cannot run away. I remember when I was working and you know, trying to pastor the church and then trying to do some uh, part-time job and all. And uh, I ran to this company. And there, behold, I saw 
Sister June, who is going to be years later, the saints of Gospel Lighthouse, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> so you got to maintain a good witness. Because one day in the church, Sister June came up to the church and Sister June said, oh, you are a pastor? But I thought you are doing these sales things and all. And so the world is a small place. But you as a witness is very important. You cannot hide yourself. You are like a light that is brightly shining. You cannot hide it. And so even your children, are you influencing them the right way? Okay? Who are you inspiring? You need to have people come to you and say, thank God you inspire me to become more faithful, to pray more, to love God more. So you are influencing whether the next generation, that is your life challenges. It's not about making money. It's not about seeking the position. It's not about greatness. In fact, the Bible warns us, don't try to see to build yourself up. If you do that, you are going the wrong way. I've known some people, they try to build themselves up. I can see it so obvious. They always want to be out in the front and they want the leader to recognize them and all that. But they faded out of life. No, they faded out of life. Very young age. I was kind of, I got worried. And so I told myself, God, I don't want to be up there and all. I, all I want is I want to influence someone, inspire someone. Because they are looking at me. I want to be a good witness for Jesus. Quote, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The realist adjusts the same. Remember, don't be a pessimist. All the time you are complaining but doing nothing about it. Don't be the optimist. Just wait for it to change. Wait for life to happen. And it's not going to happen. But be the realist. The realist say, I'm going to adjust the same and start sailing towards the high calling that God has for my life. And truly, Jesus Christ has called each and every one of you. You must be the realist. You must live and face the challenges. If you don't know, seek counsel. And you must get the direction. So remember, in life, don't be burdened down by challenges. Okay, a lot of people, they allow challenges. In fact, I got this one fella, he tried to hide as though you don't have any challenges. You know, like the ostrich. You know what the ostrich do in the Sahara Desert? When you see the lion coming, the ostrich put the head in the ground, in the sand, so to say, no, it's not coming. This is not real. I'm hiding. You, you have to face you have to face the lion, all right? But you're not facing it alone. Like King David, you are facing the lion with the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And Jesus is going to say, storm, peace be still. Jesus is going to say, not you. You and I, we are in the storm, okay? But Jesus said, storm, peace be still. So the Lord bless you this evening. Face the challenges in your life. Be brave in the Lord. Do not allow fear to overwhelm you. And live in victory in Jesus' name. 
Amen.